beautiful mama. So today I have an interview with Katrina Oakley. We talk a lot about nutrition, nutrition and diastasis, how nutrition impact the healing of DR. So if you're interested, let's dive right in. Hey everyone, I want to introduce you to a very special guest, Becky Choi, who is from the Tummy Warrior Postnatal Fitness. She is a diastasis recti expert and a registered holistic nutrition coach. I'm super excited. Welcome. Thank you so much, Katrina. It's so exciting to be here. Finally get to talk to you. I know, I know. And I know we have a lot of the same people. Diastasis recti is such a big issue for moms. But I have to ask, where did the name Tummy Warrior come from? Because I love it. It is such a great name. Thank you so much. I wanted to give like a, like identity to moms. I, you know, a lot of maybe like strong mom, mom strong, like, you know, that's not, not enough. I want them to feel powerful. I want them to feel confident. I want them to feel like they they can conquer anything. So I I started with warrior, like, okay, what goes with warrior? What, like, you know, feels good, right? Mom warrior, mom warrior sounds good, but somebody had that already. So I didn't do mom, but warrior, like, ah, okay, I'm focusing on tummy, right? I'm focusing on diastasis, right? Okay, let's do tummy warrior. (laughs) I love it. I love it so much. And thank you. Wow. It's it's just it is it, it's out there. It's such a it's such a great name. Yeah. Um so I love the fact that you have brought nutrition into this world. Like we often focus so much on diastasis exercises and yeah. the breathing and getting the core engagement and not so much on the nutrition. So what sort of impact do you really think nutrition has on diastasis? Yes, yeah, so much. And I'm so glad you asked me this question because this is why I study to become a holistic nutritionist because there's just not enough information online to talk about nutrition. And after going through my own journey and working with over 500 moms one-on-one, I realized, no, there's such a big integral part uh, into healing diastasis. It's not just about exercise. Yeah, exercise, of course, will do wonder, will will help you heal. But we cannot neglect the nutrition. So, yeah, let's talk about it. You know, it is my field. (laughs) I'd so love when, to. I can't I can't wait to hear your insight on that because it's not something I get into too much. Like uh, a little bit about, you know, you need to do something with your nutrition as well, especially if you're bloating and things. But yeah. what is the digging yes. dirt into it? Let's okay, talk let's about dig it. into it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm the talker. I was telling you, Katrina earlier, I'm like a talker. Just stop me, like pause me for a second if I wait talk way too much and like go go to way too much details. But anyhow, um, I find that there's three major components when it comes to nutrition. The first one, and I'll touch point briefly on each of it, and then I'll go more in depth into it. So the first one will be weight loss. Weight loss, losing weight. If you have weights to lose you need to lose weight. You know, there's no sugar coating around that and you, you need to lose weight. It's not just for moms with diastasis recti. You know, even moms, not moms, maybe they don't they don't even have the babies. And if they are overweight or obese, they have that bulging belly. It, it, it is there. Like, just look at anybody who are overweight and obese. They have that bulging belly, making them look like they are still pregnant, even though maybe they, maybe they might not have diastasis. If they have diastasis, it will exaggerate that effect of the distensions of the belly. So losing weight would be has to be the first component um, on the nutritionist protocol. Now, the second component would be nourish and repairing. So nourishing that connective tissues where it's stretched and thin now throughout the pregnancy, right? Where, where it's stretched, carrying, carrying the baby, so nourishing and repairing would be very important so that we can try to heal it better right we can nourishing while you're doing exercising we can help you to build more muscles around that area build that elasticity again so that we don't get so saggy and like you know we're just helping it at the same time now the third component is gut health now this is a a component where I think a lot of people don't talk about it at all or overlook maybe it's not just uh, maybe for other type of things, but not for diastasis or not for postpartum moms. But this is something that where it's like you're bloating. Um, maybe you know you you're very tired because of the gut health. You're you 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 know you you have that belly appearance. You you are, you have inflammation. Like it's just not that pleasant feeling. So all these three components make up of how important nutrition to diastasis recti and vice versa. That is amazing yeah. and such an important one. Like especially the 
the gut health. I've had a lot of ladies who like I've been working on my nutrition and I've been doing the exercises and I've lost all the weight, but yep. I still bloat. That's right. And that I feel like I've had some ladies who've said they've ended up like testing and they've ended up with SIBO. Um, uh-huh. And that suddenly is like, oh, but I, I can see how gut health must be such an important aspect of it. And it's yeah. something that seems to impact us a little more postpartum. I find oh, yeah. like for me, for example, I was totally fine with like gluten and everything prior to mm. um, giving birth. After my third child, suddenly I even look at it and I bloat. It, 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 I just like, I find it absolutely crazy. Anyway, let's start yeah. and dig into each one. So you were talking about but weight let's loss. Talk about and the gut health because, you know, we were, yeah, we were talking absolutely. about that. Let's continue with that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, I find this is the most interesting topic. You know, weight loss is weight loss, you know, nourishing is, yes. you know, like, gut health is like a whole different universe here. Like this, we can go into so many different pathways here, but let me just make it simpler for, for everybody here listening to this. It's so microbiome is like, the, it, it, it's a term that describes all the good and bad organisms in our body. The microbes has the most popularity in our digestive tract which makes up the gut microbiome. Microbiome considered as a endocrine organs. So endocrine organs responsible for productions and balancings of our hormone, of our major hormone in our body. So when, when you are improving the health and also uh, in diversity of the microbiomes, you are going to have less symptom of fatigue, depression, right? Postpartum depressions, anxiety. Oh my God, I'm so scared. Like what's going to happen to my baby? And then also like that bloating appearance of the belly, right? That inflammation, whether you're skinny or not skinny, right? Some people would have no weight to lose and they have still have that belly. Yes, diastasis is part of that. But also at the same, at the same time, I see a lot of the moms in my program is their gut health. So then you might be wondering, okay, why? Like why all of a sudden, like we have this gut issues. Like when I was eating everything like before baby and I have no issues before. And like, why all of a sudden now? Now your pregnancy and your postpartum pay, play a major, major role on your gut health. So let's talk about the elevator stress. Elevator stress from planning for pregnancy. Oh my God, you know, I really want a baby conceiving. Like I'm testing and testing. Like I took 14 months to conceive my baby. Uh, with a miscarriage in between. That's a lot of stress there just to get pregnant. Okay, now then you finally got pregnant and it's like, okay, is my baby going to be healthy? Is the heartbeat going to be there? Like, I worried every day. Like, oh my God, you have no idea, Katrina. I went to like Italy. It was a book, it was a trip that I booked before I got pregnant. I went and then I went to Italy, took the plane there. Like the whole trip, I couldn't really enjoy it. Because I was so worried that, oh my God, this, uh, you know, the, is the plane going to affect me? <laughs> like, like little thing like that, right? I know. Maybe it's for, so I don't true. Know. It's so true. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, how is this going to impact me? Oh my God, the, the bus ride is so bumpy. Like, I worry every single second. That's elevated stress. And then... After the baby is born, oh my God, am I doing a good job as a mom? Uh, you know, is it going to be okay? I'm so overwhelmed with all this stuff. So elevator stress is not just one time, one day, two, three weeks. It's a whole year, maybe more than a whole year, two years. It's a prolonged stress. So elevator stress impact our gut health. The second thing is poor sleep habits. Right. Even during pregnancy, you already have poor sleep habits, getting up to go to the washroom multiple times at nighttime. Uh, like I had this weird rash that I could not sleep at nighttime. So like you're already not sleeping during pregnancy. And again, after pregnancy, how often do you get to sleep? Oh, we, we all know that. No, no sleep. <laughs> no, no sleep. sleep right? And imagine if you have twins. Imagine if you have two kids a toddler like it's just like that is ongoing prolonged again if we're not talking about like just one time two times it's, it's a prolonged thing and the third thing that impact our gut health is the ele- um, elevated blood sugar level so you know how a lot of people they have um, gestational diabetes mm-hmm. right uh, uh, maybe not a lot but I guess a, a, a part of that population of so, uh, pregnant moms have gestational diabetes and they might not have diabetes either but because of the elevator blood sugar, it impacts our gut health again, right? Throughout that pregnancy, so that's a long time. And the last thing, and this is something that, uh, 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 and we we might not think it has so much impact, but when you think about it, it really does. It's your physical stress from labor. 
11 hours of labor, contraction, like I hear people go through two to three days. I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. That amount of stress that we have to endure. And that's what I'm saying. Women's are like miracle. I, I don't know who made up us. I don't know if you believe God. Like, I just like, oh my God, like we are like just amazing human, like so much better than men. Okay. That's why we are warrior. <laughs> that is true. That is why we are warriors for sure. Yeah. And so because of these uh, four major things that I just spoke about, your gut is so different than before baby now. You cannot eat the same thing that you used to eat anymore. It just doesn't work anymore. So the gut lining is thinned out. It's inflamed because, um, because of these stresses. Um, and if you don't take care of it, it, you you will be constantly bloated like you because the gut lining is always inflamed right so inflamed just think about like if you got a cut in your fingernails and it has to puff up to like try to heal right but imagine your cut is always there your finger is always going to be puffed up and swelling so that's what is happening inside you might not like feel it or see it but if you look at yourself and you look at that bloated, bloated belly that's exactly what your body is trying to respond and telling you, I'm inflamed, I'm swelled up, like you need to help me, you need to help me. So uh, yes, um, working on the gut health, reducing that inflammation is so important. That makes so much sense when you say it like that. <laughs> I mean, it, it does. I, I was like, why? Why after pregnancy do I suddenly yeah. have this bloating that I never had before? But it just makes so much sense, especially like after my third kid, like they're up half the night. If one gets to sleep, the next one's up. You don't yeah. get much sleep. And the constant worry just does not go away. My my oldest is now at like nearly 16. It does not go away. Like now it's Even like, oh my years goodness, old? gotta oh learn God, how to drive. And, <laughs> like a boyfriend, like it, it stress is there for like a long way to go. So like learning to deal with the gut health learning to yeah. deal with stress as well yes yes, um, yes, yes. Stress management just so important so how does obviously we we're repairing our gut lining um and how do you feel like when we stop that bloating or mm -hmm. at least start to reduce the bloating how mm -hmm. do you find that that impacts into the diastasis yeah so when you reduce bloating you will feel your muscles working a lot more, right? You can be more in tune with your body. When you're exer exercising, you're just feeling, oh, I'm so less puffy now. I know kind of what I'm doing. You can feel more, right? Mind to muscles connections. So like when you're able to connect or contract or engage your core muscles, you, you will be able to work that muscles a lot more efficiently versus when you're so bloated, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, am I, you know, it's so like, you, you just, you're just not a, less, a lot less in tune. So that will have an impact on, on that belly. And also in a sense that when you're trying to like engage and like work on the core exercises and all of that, but you're constantly bloated, then it's like a tug of war here, right? You're trying to heal, but then you're not really healing on the rest of the hours that you're, you're you know, even through sleeping, right? Exercise is only what, 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes at the moment, I think 20 minutes. <laughs> Maybe yeah. more like 20 minutes, right? It's only 20 minutes of the 24 hours, but then the rest of the day, you're so bloated. Right? Then you're just constantly putting that pressure, pressure management, putting that pressure on that stomach when it's trying to heal. So it just doesn't work like that, right? Yeah, and that's what I'm, I'm always, you know, you're putting that pressure on the going yeah. outwards whilst you're trying to bring the yeah. muscles inwards. It is that constant fight. And also that, that fact that we were talking about with the lo losing weight is also, mm -hmm. you know, you've got the bloating pushing out, but we have that, that pressure of any extra fat that might be around the midsection that as we get older seems to like decide that that's a great place to like to hang on stay. to <laughs> some on that reason. Thanks very much world. <laughs> but right. So I get a lot of, I can't lose, I have diastasis, so I can't lose weight. Mm -hmm. um, what do you sort of say with that? Because I know you were like, number one was we need to start with like losing weight and then nourish yeah. and then work yeah. on the gut health. That's and obviously right. gut health and losing weight kind of works together as well. So how, what do you say when somebody comes to you and says, I have diastasis, so I can't lose weight? Excuse. 
<laughs> I'll call you right out. <laughs> Excuse, it's not diastasis. It's your nutritional habits. You just have to lose it. Nutrition with, with weight loss, as I said, the first components in the nutrition protocol is a calories in and calories out. That's about it, right? It doesn't matter what method you use. It's, you know, you just need to eat lesser than your maintenance calories. You'll be able to lose weight. Diastasis has nothing to do with you not able to lose the weight. So you're, you're just telling yourself this is an excuse. Oh, I have diastasis. I can't lose weight. I'll just be, you know, no, you can't. You can. You definitely can. It's, it's The formula is simple. Like how, how you do it, how you adhere to it, that's the question. That's where you need to work on, right? Your nutrition habit, whether you want to do tracking, accounting, whether you want to do portion control, whether you want to do fasting, you know, everything works. Um, whatever that is suitable to your lifestyle at this season of your life, right? A lot of the, our moms are maybe newer moms. So counting and tracking calories probably not feasible for them. It's just hard, right? We don't have enough time already, right? But maybe finding, uh, so what I teach my clients more portioning, right? Portioning out the food, right? Eating all the food groups and not skipping it. And also a lot of moms who are breastfeeding, make sure that they eat enough right and, you know people are afraid to eat more because of the way to or maybe also again excuse oh i'm breastfeeding i can't lose weight so it's really not like you just need to eat and drink enough liquid for you to keep the breast milk and you will lose the weight as long as uh you are uh having uh, yeah the calories in calories out like there's so many methods around that but like but it's just it's really that equations is not, nothing to do with anything else perfect interesting yeah. So explain to me, I was really interested when you were talking about nourishing your body, mm -hmm. especially for firming up the connective tissue mm -hmm. um, down at the linear elbow, especially, um, which will help with that firming up of the diastasis. So tell me a little bit more about that. Proteins and collagens, those would be the so important thing for you to incorporate into your diet. Um, no, we cannot necessarily able to like spot, reduce a spot, treat a certain thing. You know, it's not a surgery or like a medical clinic here. But when when you're trying to um, heal that connective tissues, when you're trying to work on the core, your core, your your your, your yeah, your core is made up of muscles. It's made up of, of collagen. So you need to eat enough protein. A lot of people think, oh, I eat protein every meal, but really they are not eating enough protein a day, especially vegetarian. So you really need to eat enough protein for you to nourish, um, to, uh, to be able to provide that amino acids for the muscles to repair as you're working out, as you're exercising. And also collagen is also very important as it, uh, because it has amino acid, um, specifically gly uh, glyc um, glycine and glutamine. And these are important amino acids that helps uh, repair the lining of our gut. So these two would be really beneficial for you to incorporate enough or more into your diet. And another thing that I like to incorporate as well is uh, bone broth. So bone broth has a lot of good minerals and nutrients and vitamins that we don't normally get from just eating our food, but because bone broth or like livers, like high quality liver, they have a lot of nutrients and minerals in them that we need so that we can really nourish that our body, give us that energy that we need. And yes, it will help you to repair that connective tissues. That's sure. amazing. Because I often get um, questions about, you know, will how do you make it stronger anyway? And obviously yeah. exercise is part of that, but nutrition is also a big part of of that too so that was really interesting yeah tell me is there anything else that you wanted to share with us about nutrition and bloating and the impact it has on your diastasis yeah mm, so i because uh, i you know i'm throwing all these at you in about 20 minutes it's it seems like a lot of information and i can tell that people might get overwhelmed already at this point it doesn't have to be that way you know i i would just focus on eating a well-balanced meal um, and eating high quality of food. Part of that gut health, uh, how to repair that inflammation is to eat high quality of food, organic meats, organic food, wild caught fish, non-GMO stuff, reduce sugar, reduce or eliminate uh, ultra high processed food, seed oil, eliminate them. Like, so those are the, like, the first item, like low hanging fruits that I would ask you to just do that. 
And yes, and then later, maybe focus on more on portion controlling. Okay, how much carbs, fruits, protein, uh, healthy fats are you incorporating into your diet? So those are something that to start with. Like you don't have to go so much details into um eating a specific food or reducing a certain thing or like or like eliminating a certain type of food. It, it, we can get to that part if we need to, but just start with eating a well-balanced meal, focusing on high quality food, incorporate more protein, collagen, and bone broth. I think that would be a really great starting point to help you heal with diastasis and just feeling great. Like when you also have enough nutrients into your body, you're feeling good. You want to do the exercise because now you're taking care of yourself through your mouth. And now you, and, and also you have that energy to do the exercise and it will speed up the healing of the diastasis. And all moms want faster results. Let's face mm -hmm. it, that is something <laughs> that is asked for so much. Thank you so much, Becky. Um, so Tummy Warrior Postnatal Fitness, where yeah. can people find you? People can find me on Instagram. I'm always uh, mostly most active there. So Becky Choi underscore, that's my name. You can also go to Tummy Warrior. That's my Tummy Warrior page more for like, funny memes and some kind of transformation to give you hope and inspire inspirations but me would be becky Troy underscore and i also have a youtube channel so uh that's where i would uh, film some longer form videos that's amazing and i'll make sure i post those below as well so that people can find you um and again thank you this has been amazing and i have definitely learned a load more than i knew before about especially about the gut health that was inspiring thank you Oh, awesome. You're welcome. Thank you.